Ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you for the opportunity to talk about Mahengi. Um, we go through the usual disclaimer, and probably the, the one thing I would put up in a disclaimer is that while we say past performance not indicative of future performance, over the last three years our organisation has consistently hit its milestones time in, time out, and as we move this project forward into financing and development, um, that's a record we'd like to keep intact. So a little bit about BlackRock and, and, and who we are. Firstly, we are BlackRock Mining. We're not BlackRock Energy Technologies. We're not BlackRock Multi-Element Exploration all over the planet. We're, we're singly focused on developing what we think is the world's best undeveloped graphite project globally. Why do we think it's the world's best undeveloped project? We've got a reserve of approximately 70 million tonnes sitting in a resource of a bit over 200 million tonnes. And a reserve is really that portion of the resource that makes money for you. This gives us in the order of a 26-year mine life um, and it puts us in the bottom quartile of the cost curve and the top quartile of the revenue curve. Our people, um, most people know our chairman, Richard Crooks. Um, Richard's ex Macquarie and EMR, he's come on board and Richard is a, is, a, is a monumental supporter in the alternative energy space. We've recently appointed Ian Murray as a non-executive director, so Ian's bringing to us the discipline and drive that created Gold Road Resources and that's a very welcome uh, member of the team. So where does Mahengi set itself apart? Well, geology drives our top line and that is we've got a unique position where we do not have a secondary overprint mineralisation. In these graphite deposits, there's a very large metamorphic engine that sits underneath this and it drives fluids through the rock structure. And these fluids deposit all sorts of things, tungsten, vanadium, uranium, molybdenum, onto your graphite flake. And if you're on your graphite flake and you want to use that in a battery, you have to find a way of getting it off the graphite flake. What we've been able to do, because we don't have the overprint mineralisation, we've been able to produce flotation concentrates of up to 99% purity. And this is in a world that thinks 95% is particularly good. And in producing that 95%, 99% purity, we've only had to run this through three stages of polishing, which means we don't necessarily go through the massive flake size degradation. Uh, so we've got flake size because we have got purity and we've got a price point because we've got purity. Geography comes in its own. Um, we are proximal to a railway solution, uh, which takes us into the port of Dar es Salaam, the biggest deep water port in our region, uh, which has got something like 1,200 ship movements a year, um, a lot of ships going back to Asia, uh, to our terminal markets, mostly empty and massive container availability. Again, in a, in a business that 40% of your cost base is tied in with logistics, having a, a logistics solution at your doorstep is, is that something you'd absolutely dream for. So why graphite? Well, we've heard a few people talk about the electrification of transport and, and electric storage, and graphite's obviously a very large component of that, but it's a lot more than that. There's this emerging uh, large flake demand that's driving uh, premiums and it's driving a lot, of, a lot of interest in the business. And large flake typically gets used in our, our uh, foils and our, our insulating products and friction products. So things like brake pads, clutch pads, engine gaskets, uh, all very large users of large flake graphite. Um, to me, the really exciting point about this, if you think about China, which does about 150,000 tonnes a year of asbestos, and they use asbestos because they can't get flake graphite to replace that product. So we, we see large flake graphite as essentially a market looking for a product. And, and with a product split that's about 60% large flake at 99% purity, um, for us it's a, a very, very stunning opportunity. I think the other real point that comes in with graphite is it's one of those few commodities that is growing faster than GDP. So it's a very, very exciting area to be in as, as, as we transition to, to the electrification of transport. So as we redefine the road to production, a couple of things really come out with this. We've had to do a few firsts in the, in the, in the project. Um, in three years, we've gone from a scoping study to delivering a bankable DFS to entering into a financing process. And in that, we actually had to run a couple of pilot plants. Graphite is reasonably simple flow sheet. It's nuanced. We ran a 90-tonne pilot plant at SGS in Canada, 
We chose SGS because we needed the SGS brand to attract financing. What we didn't expect is when we took the SGS brand into our terminal markets in China, uh, they go, we just don't trust SGS. So we doubled down, we ran a second pilot plant in China um, and fortunately we repeated the experiment and got the same outcome, which we would produce 99% con. What we did in that second pilot plant was unique. We actually invited our customers to come in, sample the pilot plant while it was running. Seeing is believing, having a right to take your own samples is, is, is pretty much unheard of in this space. So we had you know, a large number of people turn up, take samples, take it home, and on the back of that, we then had people sign up to our pricing framework agreements. Now, that's pretty important because in the graphite space, we like to use the term opaque to describe pricing. What we've been able to do in our DFS, we used Roskill pricing to define the pricing scenario we used in the DFS. We then invited customers to sample our product at the pilot plant and on the back of that sampling, they agreed to sign on to a price protocol that was equivalent to the DFS. And finally, as we go back into our, our data history, there's a, an e-commerce website called RefWin, Refractory Window, um, and these guys have a small portion of their business designed to graphite, and we can see our price deck sitting in the RefWin transaction prices. So it gives us a lot of confidence when we talk about project value, when we talk about cash flows with banks, that our price protocol is transparent and defendable. So the milestones that we've achieved, we've talked a lot about um, the pilot plants, but a point, the important part about this is the fact that we've been able to get people to sign on to contracted volumes. Now these are thin form contracts at the moment. The next challenge we have is to take these to a much more robust form of contract. Um, but the fact is we've got people who are prepared to stand up and be named against a price and named against a volume to us tells us the significant interest there is in being able to gain access to this very unique concentrate, this 99% concentrate. That's all come into a pretty uh, attractive EDFS uh, financial metrics, and we use the term EDFS because it's enhanced. Because what happened in the first DFS, we had uh, what we call a modular execution strategy. We build a one million tonne a year mill it cash flow funds a second mill and a third mill. When we started talking to the big end of town, the big battery producers, we found two things. None of these people want to be boutique, they want to be behemoth, they want to be big. So they said, all right, how big can you go and how quickly can you get there? So we went one, two, three, four annually. Um, and that's where we come up for about Australian $1.6 billion NPV on a price deck that I can see in transactions today 10% discount after tax, after government free carried interest. So it's a valuable project, whichever way you want to look at it. Financing, how do you finance this? This is a $116 million capital build in Tanzania. Our approach to this is what we call a blended financial model. Um, and, and what the blended financial model is all about is just quite simply trying to be very disciplined as we've been in the DFS study process and very orderly. So what we see is we want elements of our end terminal markets as part of this. So China's going to be part of our funding solution. We're in Tanzania. Tanzania needs to be part of the funding solution. The really exciting part for me is, is what I call the Harvey Norman funding model from our vendors, which is a buy now, pay later deal. Um, and the question is, how the heck do you extract a performance warranty out of a Chinese EPC? The answer is you don't pay them till it works. Now that comes into a really important part of the funding package, but I think it's a really important part of our concept about the confidence we have in our deliverability of the project. These guys don't get paid till the project works. So we're all putting all these features in together as a single element of the financing model. That's being run by a group called ICA for us, that's uh, Ironstone Capital Advisors. And we're really quite confident as we go down this process that the, the discipline and the rigour that we've applied in the DFS coming through into the finance is going to produce a solution and we'll be in business in the not too distant future. A little bit about graphite, how graphite pricing works. Well, essentially what you need is you need purity and you need flake size. 
and the two tend to counterbalance each other. Every time you try to get purity in your flake, you have to go through additional stages of polishing, and that starts to degrade flake size. So it tends to be like a binary outcome. You can have purity or you can have size, but not at the same day. Because we don't have that overprint mineralisation, we have purity and we have size at the same time, which puts us in a very, very unique value proposition. Nobody else has got this, and when we take our concentrate out to uh, those in the industry who've been around a while, everybody comes away with a very singular reaction is, how the hell did you do that? And the answer is, it's the geology. People can copy a strategy, they can't copy the geology. A little bit of Mahengi in perspective. Like I said, we've had to do a few firsts here, and probably the one I'm most proud of is the fact we've had to go dry stacking. Um, dry stacking is capable for us because we have rock on the front end of our plant. It means we've got a very sandy tail. We can vacuum and we dry stack that. So we have a, a very, very small residue footprint. Importantly, because we're recovering a large amount of water from our tailing stream, effectively we have a neutral water balance across the year, which means we're not in competition with our host communities for valuable water, which can be quite a, a challenge in Africa where a lot of people are directed at sustainable agriculture. We're halfway between two hydroelectric stations, so we've got green power. Um, high grade concentrate means the chemical used, the invasive chemical processing used to generate the battery feed material is a fraction of what it is on our peers. So if you start to build this up, it begins a very compelling green story of, of, of our ability to, to minimise the footprint we have when we go and make battery precursor material. The biggest lever we have in this is the proximity we have to the Tanzania Zambia Railway Authority and that connection into the port of Dar es Salaam. In a business where about 40% of your cost to customer is logistics, having a railway at the front door is a great solution and, and this railway takes us straight into the Dar lots of ships, lots of empty containers, and it's a massive competitive advantage uh, that is unique to, to Mahengi. So, packing all that up, why invest in BlackRock? Look, geology is unique. Uh, a lot of people would like to copy the geology, we can't, and, and, and our geology is unique because we don't have that overprint mineralisation. We go 99% or three stages of polishing Nobody else can get there. Our geography gives us the bottom line, access to grid power, access to a low-cost transport solution. Tanzania has been mining for a long time. It's a developed mining economy. There are lots of skills available in Tanzania, so it's a massive advantage in that spot. Risk management. We have not run one pilot plant, we've run two, and we've come up with the same answer off both pilot plants. So that gives us a lot of confidence we know what's going on in the circuit and we can produce a circuit that will work. And finally, when you put all that together, it comes together with some exceptional economics. So where are we going? Graphite's growing market, BKT's well positioned, and that comes together with some exceptional economics. Going forward, we see ourselves resolving the 16% shareholding with the government of Tanzania very quickly. We see us moving into a financing process uh, where we are at the moment and ultimately moving into construction in a fairly short time. Um, like I said, one of the things we do in this organisation is try to be disciplined and orderly, so uh, we're going to bring this project in uh, a little bit ahead of schedule. Thanks, Len.